because people are crazy about, about their animals. People are uh, definitely crazy about their pets. And like a lot of the other great pet companies have done well, we're following some of those same great trends you're seeing as people are treating their pets more and more like their kids. Uh, even in this country, the last two years, we've actually had a point in time where more pets have come home than even babies at this point in time. So we're really excited about the trends we're seeing in pets and following some of the great pet offerings that have happened in the last 10 years. And, and it, I, I, I think it might be inelastic. I, got, I have three dogs, and uh, I go to the vet for whatever, and I can't believe when I give them the credit card and I, I see the receipt, I just can't believe that what I'm doing. And, and then I go to the, to the supermarket and I buy these bones, and they're like $12, and they last two days, and then I'm back buying more. I mean, we, we spend whatever we need to on our, on our pets, more than on myself, I think. Yeah, yes. it's, uh, it's really quite interesting. I think we just surpassed $80 billion in dollars spent in the United States alone on our pets. And uh, the Veterinary Channel, I think we've crossed over $8 billion spent a year on providing health care for our pets. But it's really quite interesting. Even with all those dollars being spent, there's still a huge percentage of consumers that aren't providing great pet health care. And so ultimately, Pet IQ, we really focus on seeing how we can even expand that to even get better health care for pets and make it available and accessible to everyone. So. You know, I, I asked you when you were here about Amazon because I know Costco, uh, Pet, Petco, Walmart, they're all customers of yours. Amazon is a customer as well? We do business at Amazon as well. Mm -hmm. And, and we, uh, we view all of our retail partners as great ways for us to access consumers. We, we do not do any direct business with consumers. And, and our job is to really help enable the market to have access to affordable pet health care. Court, I, I, I ask this just because we've seen what happened with IPOs recently. Blue Apron is the most recent one we were talking about. Blue Apron came out, and it was in a lot of, uh, under a lot of pressure because Amazon was getting into its sector. So that's not going to happen with you. They're already a customer. That's good news. How would you describe the IPO market right now out, outside of what happened with Blue Apron? Yeah, I, I'm in the pet business. I'm not in the IPO business. I've, I've learned a lot in the last uh, year and a half preparing this. Okay, so you must this. have had people saying this is a good time or a bad time right now because why? Um, we've met with the top investors in the country. The book was significantly oversubscribed. I think that may be either the market itself, the IPO market, or there's a lot of people that have multiple pets and just get that pets are going to be very important and continue to be important. We've had a great reception coming onto the market. We couldn't be more excited to be here. Couldn't be more excited about the reception we've had. And ultimately, the shareholder base that uh, came in over this last couple of weeks has been uh, something we could only dream about as a company to have that type of support. In terms of having more capital because of going public, what will you do with that? You know, we've got a lot of growth strategies the company has, has put out there that are important. Uh, as we said, there's a, very, there's a very large number of consumers that are virtually unaware that they need to provide the kind of pet health care that's available. So us being positioned with more capital just makes us be available and in a market that we can do what's required to expand that. So it's a time for us to really implement our growth strategies, bring consumers in, hopefully help those pet parents just provide better health care. How much is, just break down, how much is dogs? How much of your <laughs> revenue would you say is dogs? Um, dogs is uh, a bigger portion of it. How about cats? It'd be a smaller portion, but we're all dogs. What about cats. all other? What about turtles? Yeah, well, we have not uh, studied the turtle market to know, just but today it's dogs and cats. <laughs> just dogs and cats? Dogs and cats that's is a, big enough. There's a lot of other kinds of pets. What about uh, uh, marmots? Goldfish. Man. Nice marmot, man, no? You, you know, we have not got, I'm pretty sure people may be using some of the stuff there, but right pigs. now we're really focused on dogs and what cats. What about those little pigs? Little cute pigs? We do live in Idaho, dogs. lots of pigs. We may have to look at that as an expansion on <laughs> market opportunity. But at this point, it's only dogs and cats. <laughs> You have a huge uh, There's this expansion opportunity to, to, to expand, right? Right. And so when we talk about that expanding pet market, that $80 billion, it, it's dominated by dogs and cats. Uh, I personally am a dog guy, and we have well, great... What, yeah. do, you, do you have any drug that can make cats like their owners or, or appreciate their owners or, let, or even, <laughs> even allow them to approach their owners without sort of a, you know, an aloofness? Do you have anything that... No? That, that might be more you than everybody else. I think uh, we have a lot of people love I'm cats. I'm allergic to cats. <laughs> Hey there, thanks for checking out CNBC on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of the day's biggest stories. You can also click on any of the videos around me to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.